Ladies, if you struggle to find a husband in Dubai, here is what you need to do. Put that chastity belt down. I'm about to tell you where to find your husband. Hey, girl, Steph, you're the best place to meet single men, Midtown Edition. Here's another common question I get. So, I want a boyfriend or I want a husband. Where should I look? <laughs> this is there isn't a single man coming to pull you out your misery. Stop looking. Where in Miami are you most likely to meet your husband? I know a thing or two about where the hot boys like to gather. And here are some places to find hot guys to make awkward eye contact with and never speak to. Don't know your type, but I think this is where you find hot people in LA that are not coffee shop. It's about time they realize they do not qualify. Marriage is a lost cause. Kindly subscribe to the channel. That's the only contribution we ask of you. If you live in San Diego and you want to meet hot guys, literally go to Trader Joe's and PB. It's the best place in the world. Every man there, it's Monday night at like 6 o'clock. But every man there, it's like, oh, you're beautiful. I just realized that Tinder is the perfect place to find husbands. It's somebody else's husband, but there's lots of husbands there. Hot take. If you're looking for the hotties in New York City, just go to the fancy supermarkets. Especially on a Sunday morning. Woo! Where in Miami are you most likely to meet your husband? <laughs> the Miami Heat's playoff skates. The best guy. If you want hot men, come to a Heat game ASAP. So I continue my quest to find the rich husband. And what better place than the NFL draft in Las Vegas? Let's go find them. Step one, we have Bellini. Next, I got my backstage pass. I walked through the crowd and realized I am better than all of you. So where are we right now? The, we're at the Coachella equivalent of the NFL. Who's going to be drafted first? I think Hutch is going to go. I am the first draft. Get out of here. Then I got to see other college players in the suit. Oh, look at that one. I laugh at the peasants in the crowd. Then all of a sudden, Ice Cube was there. There was plenty of men in suits oh look at this one he's cute oh how about that one i like oh yeah there also was a draft going on suited man still on phone oh and then there is my king look at them oh and then these guys were heckling everyone that walked by i loved it she was flirting with them and her man was not about to look at him he's like no bitch they didn't want to draft this guy better luck next time bye men in suits well i didn't find a rich husband but i found what uh... I really wonder how long modern women will keep searching for a man until they realize the men have had enough and just decided to walk away. Okay, on a serious note, where do like the 28 year old single men hang out at? Because like 28 to like 30. <laughs> You're so right. We're bopping around the West Village and I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. <laughs> eyes are peeled. But I'm not finding them. So if you're 28 and single, there we live in New York. It's, it shouldn't be that hard to find. They are at work or at home staying away from women so they can keep their money and sanity. I'm 28 and just moved to New York City and I would like to know as well. When you find out, please let us know. Well, if you are looking and still can't find them, I'll tell you where they're at. After working their shift, some of them goes to the gym, some of them go home, and some of them like to enjoy playing their games after a long day. The men that you're looking for are trying to avoid modern women at all cost. Doing what they love is at the top of their priority, and modern women isn't one of them. You're in university and you can't find any guy who doesn't suck? Maybe go to church. That might be a way to do it. People with Christian values are pretty solid people. Probably a controversial thing to say. Go fishing for a husband at church. And I think it's also easier when you get a bit older to differentiate between who actually is smart and has it together and who doesn't. I had a very difficult time when I was in my early 20s figuring out who was smart and who wasn't smart. So many of y'all are giving such bad advice. Okay, here's where to actually meet hot quality guys in LA. Let's be fucking for real and realize that we're probably not going to be the love of your life at the club. Maybe, probably not. I need you to stop thinking at level one. Think at level three, okay? Let's say you want a doctor. Choose a hospital. Frequent the cafeteria. They usually have Wi-Fi. You can work there. I didn't tell you that. Or if that's too intense for you, frequent the food spots and coffee shops around the hospital where they can grab and go coffee and food because they're busy. Let's say you want a man with hobbies who doesn't bother you all the time. If you want a man who wears Solomon's, Arcteryx, and Carhartt's for legitimate reasons, check out Cebu Sol events. Yeah, fly fishing, climbing, and falconry, which was probably the best day of my life. Or if you want someone good with their hands, go to a ceramic studio. I like clay, it's in Chinatown. If you want a guy with good stamina, check out places with good athletic gathering things. For example, try a running club if you like runners, or table tennis, or pickleball courts in LA. 
I think this is the most underrated if I'm being honest. Go where the hot bitches are. Hopefully they'll be dating a hot guy with hot guy friends or relatives. You're welcome. They always recommend women to go to these places, but never recommend them to approach the guy and initiate the conversation. They believe their presence is enough to make the man approach. They put in so much effort into searching for these men, but little effort to actually make the relationship work. Their next dude is just one DM away. Dating has only become harder because of women. Okay, so I'm finally going to make a video on how I find my sugar daddy. Y'all keep asking me, y'all keep begging for this video, so let's get started. Just so y'all know, yeah, real deal. So first thing you have to do is download Tinder. Some of y'all fast ass probably already got it, but yeah, download Tinder. Once you have Tinder, go ahead and download Tinder Plus. This is a must things and then click on your like preferences and the age you're looking for is between 35 to like 65 because no shade these younger men do not be having no coins they don't got none of that they don't got it. see me i've been doing it for a long time so like i could really look at a man and know if he got the coins or not no shade but you need to be looking for a older preferably caucasian that just looks like he's kind of lonely and needs some comforting and just like that you found one and now the number one question i get asked is how do i ask them for the funds how do i ask them for the coin I would advise to always talk to them for at least a day or two before asking for anything. And remember, before you ask them for anything, make sure you unmatch them on Tinder. Because not all of these men are SDs. Not all these men are tricks. They get real butthurt. They real broke around here. <laughs> so get their phone number and then unmatch them on Tinder. Now, I do have some cyber SDs and I also have like some in-person SDs. This is where the Tinder Plus is going to come in handy. If you're just looking for like a cyber SD, you don't really care to like meet up with them in person and go out to eat and go shopping or whatever. You just want to like get money. Change your location to like either Houston, LA, or like New York, or even Miami. And then match with men over there. And no shade, just turn one of them to your trick. <laughs> I got this one man that's all the way in Oklahoma. He swear that I'm coming to see him next month, baby. I'm not. <laughs> Pay for these nails though. That's all that matters. I got banned from Tinder for asking for money. I need the money. What happens if you're banned from Tinder? This is a broke woman's hustle. What they do is try and find older men who have been crushed by the world and take advantage of them for their own personal gain. This is what I mean when I say some of these women are the devil in disguise. They only care about fueling their greed from someone else's hard work. In the process of them begging men for money, a lot of them were banned from Tinder. It's really crazy because women are always calling men broke, but look at the level they're stepping to, trying to get money from those very same man. Now that I'm out on the dating scene, I have to say that one of the best places that you would not think of that you can meet someone organically is at the park. Let me just say, I've been stopped three times while I'm reading at the park and the go-to line every single time has been what book are you reading what is it about and then it'll start conversation unfortunately i have not been attracted or it, the guy has not been my type but it is a good place to potentially meet somebody go to your local park just sit there read listen to music go on a walk and you don't know who's gonna come up to you and just start a conversation the thing is we won't find our type walking around a park they be with their boys in the clubs, street. I go to the park all the time, honey. The men are 40 and up. I've been doing this for a few months, but no one's asked yet. Honestly, if I was at a park by myself and a lone male approached, it would probably scare me more than anything. Women like the bad boys. The type of man they're looking for isn't gonna be at some park reading a book. The desperation is only growing because some of them are actually considering doing this and heading to the park. None of this would be happening if they were reasonable creatures. They're always talking about the man's qualification, but how do they know they even qualify to be with the man they're looking for? I'm gonna break up. Let's talk about it over pizza. What do you want? A bigger dick. S sausage or... <laughs> Never had a boyfriend. What? Never. Never? Never in my That's life. That's ridiculous. No. I know, right? Okay, so you're a big sister, you see here. I've been trying with nice guys. 
with college guys, with humble guys, with everything. Nothing worked. Everybody was just breaking my heart. So you know what? I'm just going with rich guys. Well, at least I'm gonna cry my lips. Okay. Today we are in the most gorgeous and luxury hotel in Beverly Hills. So here's the secret. You don't need to be shy. Nobody cares about you. So just please see the objective. We're gonna try next time. Alexa, remind me that I don't need a man and men are useless. When should I remind you? Every damn day. These are my requirements for dating. Moving forward, I want the password to your phone, the password to all of your social media accounts. I want to know that I am the only woman that you are pursuing. Even through the hard times, you're not seeking validation on Instagram, Snapchat, or paying $9.99 to some ratchet hoe on OnlyFans. My body will be the only body that you want to see naked, or we're not going to be together. If I'm not enough for you, we're done. Capiche? Capouche. I don't want you saying, here's my phone, go through it, I'm not doing anything, because you already deleted everything on your phone before you chose to hand it over. Do we look stupid? And don't tell me I'm crazy for wanting to look through your phone. I'm crazy for blindly believing that you're not doing anything shady when my intuition is telling me otherwise. So passwords are a must from now on. I want to be able to look through the phone whenever I feel. It's called trust building. And if you look at me like I'm crazy, it means that you're doing something wrong. So we're getting passwords. So be prepared guys. If you want to be in a committed relationship, you need to be transparent and ladies stick to it. Stand firm. Okay. Stand firm. I believe there are good ones out there. Psycho. Being in a relationship is working on problems together. Problems you wouldn't have if you were single. I would rather keep my password secret and you must sign a prenuptial. Trust me, or we done. It's called too controlling. Trust doesn't exist anymore. So sad. There are good ones. But you are going to make yourself ruin a good thing by not trusting the guy. He won't feel the trust from you, so you will make him miserable. This is someone who's been hurt in the past from many relationships. But in a relationship, if there's no trust, you guys might as well not be dating. The only thing you're going to do is make your partner feel like they can't be trusted. And that's going to spark up some issues in the relationship. A person who feels this way needs to heal away their pain before getting back into dating. They're only going to bring that trauma to their partner and drive them away. I just saw the cutest guy in Trader Joe's. That was actually very dramatic. He was literally so mediocre. I just don't think I'm used to seeing like guys my age when I'm like running errands. I don't know why I like look like this and expect to like have a meet cute in a farmer's market. As I was like pushing my little empty cart around the fucking store because then I realized I really did not need that much. Um, we keep staring at each other and I was like... Do I say something? I, I literally wanted to be like, hi, like, I don't know, but I thought about it. And then I looked at his car and there were roses. Gonna assume they're not for his mom. I mean, that would be really cute, but also a little concerning. Everyone who's in a relationship is always like, it'll happen when you least expect that. I'm like, shut the fuck, literally shut up. But I was listening to my girls, girls gotta eat, shout out girls gotta eat. And Jay Shetty, he was on the podcast and he said, I think it happens when you're least prepared. Like, maybe I should start doing my makeup and coming to Trader Joe's. Put that chastity belt down. I'm about to tell you where to find your husband. Hopefully you're adventurous because the rich tech men love to rock climb for some reason. Now, you don't got to go out there and be on no cliffs and rocks and boulders and stuff. They like to indoor rock climb too. One of the really popular gyms is called Vital in Brooklyn. You're welcome. The next one y'all probably know, but you need to get your skis and your snow boots because they really got the slopes. You can't go wrong with the Palisades and Tahoe. Mount Peter is a really popular one in New York. Then Stratton and Jay Peak are popular ones in Vermont. Next, get on your Serena and Venus because they love them some tennis. The Billie Jean King National Tennis Center in Queens is very popular. They also have a bunch of events going on there all the time. Like they have a dog show coming up. So, you know, just like rich, successful activities. Y'all might want to pull up to the dog show. But also Vanderbilt Tennis Club, Sutton East, and McCarran Park are popular ones in New York.
Lastly, they love to cycle and not like soul cycle, that indoor stuff. No, you need to get out in the elements. Bike.nyc has a lot of popular cycling events and I think they also have like routes on their website. But if you're really not into outdoor cycling, maybe you could just like pull up to the bike store and look cute. I can agree some of the places she mentioned. It is very possible to find a man there. But those men go to these places with their friends to have a good time, not to pick up another bill. Whenever the wall starts creeping in, that's when modern women decides to start searching for their lover. Whenever their lives gets hard, that's when they decide to want a man. A man is always needed when they need saving. Don't allow yourself to be treated as a last option. Beautiful ladies, if you want to find a husband, here is exactly what you do. You focus on yourself, you become super, super happy, and you fall in love with yourself. And then when you're living the best of your life, a man will come, see how wonderful you're doing and be like, let me get into her life and ruin everything for her. That is really cute guy at Trader Joe's. Actually, every time I go to Trader Joe's, I see gorgeous men. I was having a conversation with my guy friend last night and we were talking about like how to meet guys in not bar settings. And we talked about, you know, the gym, the beach, a couple other options, church. I think... Trader Joe's is where I'm going to meet the love of my life. There's something about the men that choose to shop there. They are gorgeous. They're kind of indie, like, cool vibe. Not very, like, jock in your face, but kind of, like, I'm a gorgeous man, and I don't, I don't know it. I don't know it. I'm a little humble. The guy that was at the counter was buying wine, and he was, like, a brunette, tall, stunning man. Black t-shirt. If you see this, hey, because we made eye contact like six times, but I couldn't go up to you because I didn't know what to say. But I saw you and you were gorgeous. Anyways, yeah. Pretty much Trader Joe's is where I'm going to be my future husband. So I um, might just start going there like looking cute from now on and like carry my little bouquet of flowers looking like a single little lady. Period. Don't know your type, but I think this is where you find hot people in LA that are not coffee shops. The form of weekend is in my top, just so cute right now. And I have it paired with the Levi's balloon jeans. Anyways, my friend Esther and I, check her out, she does ceramics. We were seeing Row in downtown LA, technically the arts district, but the shop here are so niche and aesthetic. And niche and aesthetic people can be really hot. I always see someone who looks like a model here. I'm pretty sure Lululemon and some commercials were shot here. Next, I think hot people are cultured people. Also, shout out to Joanne for saying hi to me. That was so sweet of you. Went to the Chinatown one. I saw a lot of hot people there. Maum is a pop-up marketplace featuring Korean business owners. I've seen a lot of hot people at Clink Wine Club. Check them out. Personally, I think they have the best music sets in K-Town. I feel like everywhere else in K-Town, they'll play basic ass music that's like Billboard Top 100. Um, Erwan, I don't know. Kai Gerber's hot. She shops there. Might be dumb because they're willing to pay $20 for a water bottle, but, but might be hot. Select your neighborhood Erwan based on what your type is. Love the country kitchen. How people go here after a hike? I'm afraid that men are about to learn rule number one of capitalism. And what would that be? In order to negotiate, you have to bring value. Based on what is shown on the screen, it does seem like one is going to try to explain that men have no value. And in order to strike, you have to be able to take something away from the person that you're trying to strike against. That is the meaning of a strike. It means withholding something until you get your needs or conditions met. That's a strike, okay? So I just have one question, one question for all of y'all. And what's that? What is that thing? Go ahead, what is that thing? Sadly, I believe they're serious in asking that question. What are you going to withhold from women in any meaningful way that is going to force us to meet your conditions and demands? What will it be? Go ahead. What will it be? What will you withhold from us? Have you thought about that? I'm fairly certain that they have. Because I guarantee you, in less than a month's time, tops, I promise you, everybody's going to forget about this. I highly doubt that. The reason being, because unlike what some believe, this is not about some men going on strike so they can get something out of women. Oh no, it is in fact more about men holding up a mirror to the face of the behavior that a lot of women have been displaying in regards to their own dating standards. So when men start acting in the exact same way that women do, it definitely seems that some women are not liking the reflection. Second rule of capitalism. Don't overinflate the value of something that is overly saturated in that market. If she can't handle me at my softest, she doesn't deserve me at my hardest. Drizzle, drizzle, kings. The simplest answer is money, unconditional love, protection, and most importantly, 
our time. If a lot of men kept their money in their pockets, they would have way more of it. They wouldn't need to spend it on only fans and porn sites. Remember fellas, no hymen, no diamond, drizzle, drizzle.